Good afternoon and welcome to the Small Business Cheerleader podcast. I'm Nicola from NW Marketing, the Small Business Cheerleader. And today I am joined by Joanne Ross-Wells from JRW Bridal and Couture. And we're here to talk today about how to be and how important it is to be authentic in small business. So how are you today? I am so good. Excited to be on your podcast. Love listening to them. Really raw and authentic. So I love it. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. And that's why, as we were talking before, this is my favorite topic to talk about in business. Um, So we're going to dive deep because I know that you are just as passionate as me about this. So let's introduce you first. Give everyone an idea of how you got to where you are now and what led you to be um, a real passionate and advocate for being authentic in small business. So I uh, initially got married at the age of 20, thinking I'd traveled the world and and lived life and um, had my kids quite young at 22 and 24. And I started a little home business doing lingerie. It started off for friends and family and it grew and grew. I did a few short courses and that developed into a a swimwear range. And after about 13 years, I then went over to the Gold Coast. I was living in Zimbabwe at the time, went over to the Gold Coast, studied fashion design and just was in my absolute element. And I then went into the more the couture side of fashion, Mm -hmm. but I kept the swimwear going because I just love creating the fabrics and the artwork and, and because I'd been doing it it was a bit of a baby. I then left the Gold Coast, went back to Zimbabwe for six years and then on to London for two years before moving over to Perth, which I'm just so settled here absolutely love it Um, but yeah I have lived in six countries on four different continents so I definitely bring a bit of an international flavor into my (laughs) designs Um, and yeah in Perth I've been focusing on uh, bridal and couture and just love it and it just fills up my days there's just no room for the lingerie and swimwear at this point (laughs) Oh, well, that's the thing. Once you find a passion yeah. side of your business where you connect with people who just love what it is you do, it's yeah. hard, isn't it? Because you really get busier and busier in yes. one side and it, it has to make a decision on where that energy has to go. But exactly. I love the fact that you have been able to do so many different, the, the variety of work you've been able to do because yeah. that brings even more flair into your bridal, doesn't it? It because does. I tend to use that. corsets and a little bit of a lingerie look in some of my collections so yeah I love I love that I had a corset for my bridal um for for my wedding gown so I just love I love that whole concept it just it's it's amazing and and it's about texture and 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 getting those lines isn't it of of having that beautiful with the lingerie comes in yes because I tend to design to people's body shapes and proportions And having a corset, whether it's visible or sort of underneath, it definitely helps shape and sort of give a really good structure to the gown. So yeah, I I, I remember the um, other day I got my bridal gown out. Somebody wanted to see it and it was 25 years since I got married and I put it on. I was like, oh, my gosh, I think the corset (laughs) was good 25 years ago. Not quite now, but it still looked beautiful. So I was like, I'll just look at it. It's fine. Yeah, just admire it. Yeah. The beauty of the work, that's what I think I appreciate most most about couture Mm -hmm. and about bridal, the actual passion and the work that goes in. And and going through that concept of having mind designed, I know the the ship, the designing, the sitting, the playing with calico to begin with, the the concept. I can see why you love it. I love it. Yes, yes. Very rewarding. So we want to talk today about how that all came about for you in regards to being authentic and how you run your business and how you feel that works so explore that with me so you we're going to talk about three main topics today so knowing your beliefs and your values and something that everyone who knows me knows I love um, knowing your why that is a major part of small business and success comes from that and knowing your avatar your ideal client as I call it how how do you know who they are so let's start with um, beliefs and values how does that work for you in your business and and your clients how does that all come together for you as a business owner yeah and you know the more you're in business the more you realize how critical it is um 
for that uh, sort of complete satisfaction between you and your client. So I've, had, I've got my values up on the wall here and I've got connection, love, inspire, authentic, and passion. Yeah. And, you know, I'm trying to bring that through into my social media and through my website um, just because I want to attract the girl that values being authentic, um, you know, under love is the kindness and all, you know, the relationships and how much you value people, the connection. So when I've sort of been in a situation with someone that, you know, has different values, I know from the beginning, we're not going to work well together. Mm-hmm. You know, I would be able to create her, her gown without a problem, but the dynamics involved, and you'll know from having a custom gown made, it's you you develop a really deep um, friendship and bond through it because it is such a special time. So for me, with each year, I know more and more uh, little triggers when it's just not going to work with a bride and I can steer her towards someone else who I think she'll be better suited to. Yeah, that's 100% because I do a lot of work with my clients um, when I do my sessions on core values because I think it's so underrated in how you can actually attract aligned clients just by being clear yourself on your values. As an example, my values are TONE. They they just happen to make um, the acronym TONE. So treat each other like family own your own journey, no drama ever, and empathy always. Um, Because those things I look out for in my clients and I look out for in my team because you have to know what you will and won't stand for. And I think the more you are in tune with that, the more likely you are to filter out other people who are not really on that same journey. And you're right, if you're with a bride, I mean, that is an intense, close-knit relationship. Yeah. And if you have anything that seems out of alignment, it's just not going to be a good relationship either work. way. It's not yes. just for you, for her as well. For her as well. So um, for you to have that realisation, I've got mine up here as well. And, and I yeah. think sometimes just to refer to it is like a compass. It yeah. just makes sure that whatever decision you're making is really in line with where your vision is for your business. That's exactly. how I look at it. Yes. And, um, yeah. So have you had experiences where I know you said you've had some where you've had little red like red flags or triggers? How do you find that goes for you? And, and what do you do when that hits you? Yeah, well, it's like, for example, kindness. It's so important to me when I'm working with someone and in all my relationships to have kindness as a bit of a foundation for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I pick up... Um, that that's just not something that she values. I know the journey with her is going to be difficult because there's going to be a few, um, uh, possibly on my side, you know, it's like you just don't want those ugly moments where you just feel you're not respecting each other in the way that you would like. And I have had a bride, um, people say, oh, you must have a lot of bridezillas. (laughs) The, The bridezillas that I've had are when our values are not in alignment yeah and um, you, know, you know don't you I, I've yeah. had the same I've had clients where I've had to turn down project contracts because I just know or yeah. I've dealt with them in the past and I just know and and I try and tell my clients that it's it's energetics ultimately because yeah. if it doesn't align the energetics are out and you'll either be constantly you know they call you at all hours they ring you all the time they complain Mm -hmm. all the time nothing's ever good enough yeah and then your energetics are drained and then what happens is you don't have enough left for the ones that do value you exactly and I think that is the ultimate shame in small business and I would rather leave that to open myself up for more aligned people and allow myself that opportunity. So I tend to think we do go through in some seasons of scarcity where, Mm. you know, we think we have in early stages of business, we have to take on everyone because it's business. Yes. But I think that's also the learning part, isn't it? Of what you don't you know, you don't know until we don't know what you don't know. So yeah, Yeah. it's a learning path, isn't it? And every um, client like that, that I sort of, move on to someone else that I think is better aligned I know I'm allowing room for the person that's right for me 
-hmm. so you just like you say the energetics are much better than you've got you know just all the right levels I think you know people say that that obviously the saying of you know one door closes another one opens Mm -hmm. but that's sometimes very true and that's more an energetics thing that probably in the last five years I've taken on board more than I would have before Um, I think the older you get and the more experience in business you have that you can see those red flags can't you yes yeah are there a lot to tune in to them they're a lot clearer than when you first start out you tend to you know be like oh you know I'm probably a lot more open to I'm sure it'll be okay but then when you get on you like no that's not working I'll put you on to someone I think you'd be much more in line with and that's a great knowledge it is and almost like for me it's a bit of an intuition now that I'm trusting more and more in the beginning I'm like oh maybe I can do this and you go with it and at the end you're like no you should have listened to your gut right in the beginning oh I've yeah I can probably think of two in particular in my brain straight up that I was just like I heard my gut and I ignored it ignored it never again and yeah it's when you hit oh yeah and I go back and I think Nicola why no I'm sure I can make it work no they're just having a bad day I can know yeah yeah intuition and I think I think beliefs and values are the first step before you start putting together, you know, like what we're going to talk about, you know, your why and your and your ideal client, because the more yeah. clearer you are on where you sit on that, that helps build the rest, doesn't yes, it? You know, it does. Absolutely. Your, it's your like why. the foundation for mm. everything to follow. Yeah, you, you try and say to people it's a bit like Jenga, isn't it? I mean, it's a simple analogy, but if you don't yeah. have those ones in the right spot, how are you ever going to build up yeah. into where you are you know, you have a safe working environment? Exactly. <laughs> You'll be always wobbling and waiting for yeah. the next, you know, yeah. thing you to be pulled to... out from under you. Easier said than done, but it's something yeah. I think people jump ahead of and mm. I, they don't tend to focus on it. I see a lot of people doing shiny stuff, you know, yeah. oh, that looks cool or that looks cool. Yeah. But then they get to a stage of business, maybe a level of business yeah. where yeah. they are quite busy and they are, but then they can't grow because they're stuck as to what that vision for their business looks like. Yeah. Where yeah. Do I, where, what do I stand for? Where do I go? And I think people forget that. Once you get to a certain level, if you're not super clear, that next scaling attempt is very murky as to how you want to go. And I think that's what um, the why comes in. So explain to me what what you think of when you think of a why in business and why it's so important to you as as your experience of it. Yeah, I've turned this over in my head a few times. And as a creative, Mm -hmm. I'm happiest when I'm creating. So for me to be able to interpret someone's vision in their head Mm. and actually it's like realizing a dream yeah and as women our wedding day you know even if you haven't dreamt of it since you were a little girl you know if it was just like the month before um if for me it just it's helping women be the best they can be on one of the most important days Mm. and feeling really good about it and for me I always say you must wear the dress, the dress mustn't wear you. So it's important that the bride shines through. So my why is about making the difference for the bride on that special day, because even though it's one day, it's the memories and the photos are there forever. Yeah. You know, it's the day you always are going to look back on yeah. and hopefully without any regrets. You know, if you've ended up choosing the wrong dress and you only realize that on the day or looking back at the photographs that's something that I would love everyone you know to avoid so my why is it's the passion of being a creative and being able to help someone else realize a dream yes that's exactly right because a why ultimately um because obviously I do uh, this is the main crux of what I do with small businesses is really dive that little bit deeper Mm. into getting the real why because what what I find is people tell me I know what my why is and I I know what my vision and mission is and and when I I read them I I say okay well how is this um, a journey that others will want to be part of how is it a journey that people would want to support you on I used to have clients that their their vision was to be the you know best um, in Australia at at what it was they did which is more like a goal 
Yes. When you come to a vision, how does that make me as the client or the ideal client want to go on that journey with you? You know, yeah. what do you stand for? Like, yeah. how do I want to be part of that? Yeah. It's, it's way too superficial level. So it's about getting deeper into, you know, why do you want to be the best? Mm. What will that do? Yeah. And then you go deeper. Okay, well, that's a great answer. What will that do? Yeah. And then you always try to ask five more. If you can get five under, that's okay. the real why. That's okay. the real reason you do what you do. And it should never have anything to do with your business yeah. or you. It, your vision is that sunset, that thing over the hill that keeps yeah. you going every day that you're okay. never going to reach, but it just inspires yeah. you. And yeah. by having some clarity on that, it really allows people to want to join you on that journey. Yeah. And I can sense and feel that in you already because you can see the impact it has on yeah. your brides. Yeah. And that's where the impact is what we want to have as our why and why it's so important, literally, why you love it so much because you can feel the impact you're having. Yes. And um, that alone just drives me to help more small businesses understand that because okay. the importance of the clarity, I've had clients go, oh, my God, really? Is that why I do what I do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. that helps me now put together, yeah. you know, what is it I want to create now mm. from that clarity? Okay. You know, what is it that I can put out in the world that is going to have that impact I'm chasing? What yeah. helped me, um, you know, get closer to that vision and yeah. uh, it's just some amazing work when you see people clear on what that is and and if you did you find that for you when you finally came to seeing that that impact you were having with what you were doing and how it just inspired you to keep going oh definitely and you know we all have those days where if it's imposter syndrome or our energy levels are a bit low I tend to I've got a word document with all my reviews yeah and I'll just need to read two or three of them. Yeah. And the inspiration that I get reading the joy and the meaning that it's given to my brides, it's like, you know, I, this is amazing. You know, this, yeah. this, is, this is why I do it. You yeah. know, it's the joy that I'm bringing to women on their wedding day that, yeah. For me, it's a thrill, you know, it's, it's, it, it just is. And, and I a hundred percent agree. Cause I did that probably six months ago. You know, you might have one client or something where it just, I don't know, you, we've all had it, as you said, and you're like, Oh, is it, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing it the right way? Am yeah. I, am, what I'm putting out there, is it right? You know, yeah. and then you go back through testimonials and you see that impact and you're like, yeah. it is, it just it is. is. It and is. Hence, <laughs> Hence why a vision you never reach because yeah. it's just always going to be that thing that you're just going to keep you motivated Driving to. because the motivation is what's going to keep you there. Those times you want to burn it all to the ground and yeah. we've all been there daily sometimes yeah but you just think why am I even here? I'm just burning it all to the ground and starting yeah. again and yeah. then someone will come up and have a referral and say, my friend, you had so much impact. Yeah. You know, I want, and you're like, really? Oh, yeah. gosh, I forgot. No, that's why I do what I do. So, exactly. Because okay. I get some of my brides halfway through the journey. They're like, Joe, I need you to dress me. And I'm like, but I can show someone how to do your dress. No, I need you there. And that comes down to the energy and the relationship you've developed. Yeah. You know, so then for me, it's a real privilege to be there on a wedding day, putting her into a dress. You know, seeing her walk down the aisle and, and wishing her the best, which I just did on Saturday. And it was, yeah. it's just, yeah, it's it's very uplifting. Yeah. And I think that is obviously why we do what we do and yes, why people is... keep going, whether exactly. it's good or not. I yeah. mean, it's not, yes, of course, if it was easy, the old saying, everyone would do it. Mm -hmm. So you're obviously either really mad or you really love it. One of yes. the other, and I hope it's the... The latter, because yeah. sometimes it feels like the former. Yeah. But the latter is it. Yeah. Uh, now let's dive a little deeper. We've talked about you know how we can find those aligned people because yeah. we're clear on our values and our why. But when yeah. we're talking about finding or at least identifying our avatar, our ideal client, yeah. how did you go about that in your small business of knowing who it was? You know the pain point you were trying to solve, yeah. I suppose. You know for your ideal client, what did that look like for you? Yeah, and it, uh, Nicola, it didn't come easy. It took me a couple of years, um, and it's it's the bride who 
she's either got a very strong vision in her mind of what she wants mm -hmm. and she's either been through five different bridal stores or she hasn't been at all she just knows her vision is very unique she's going to have to get it made um, but here in Perth I'm finding generally it's girls that have gone shopping mm. and they left instead of feeling uplifted and it's the whole yes to the dress hype and they left feeling you know very disheartened confused you know nothing is is exciting them and then you know in a consultation I will get out all the little elements that I know is they're gonna just feel wonderful in yeah. you know and being able to bring those in so for me my avatar is someone um that's feeling downhearted you know just not getting the, the best out of the whole wedding dress journey and being able to sit with her and get the vision either out of her head or out of mine if she doesn't have one if some brides are just not sure why they're not finding anything yeah. you know and I've got a way of unpacking all of that mm -hmm. um so that it's difficult for me to to actually put into words into a few words what my avatar is um, well, I, I think you've explained it beautifully because you're using your gifts in that regard because your gifts are enabling um, them to have what's up here out. Yes. And, and I tend to do that with my clients of getting everything that's up here onto paper, move it around until it makes sense. Yes. And that's what you're doing in regards to what they have up here and yeah. making it work. And I think that that's a gift. So it's moving that gift into something that can have the impact you'd like to make in the world and I mean to have that clarity is fantastic because I think that that is a market an ideal client that yeah. needs help yes <laughs> that, that might not be addressed they might have all the books and they might yeah. have done all the research yeah but they're just not feeling it but you yeah. have that knowledge experience and creativity yeah. to find and, it and for them. You know, the biggest problem is a lot of the um, pictures online, your magazines, they're all six foot size eight brides. So if you've got someone who's five foot five and she's a size 12 or 14 and she goes in to try on that dress and it doesn't, she doesn't understand why it just doesn't look good on her. You know, so I'm able to tweak different design elements uh, because if you're short-waisted, uh, you've got to drop the belt. If you're long-waisted, you can wear the belt. So there's lots of little things that, um, you know, you can get in and just technically correct so yeah. that it's absolutely perfect for her proportions. Yeah, and Wide I, shoulders, narrow hips, you know, or wide hips, narrow that. shoulders. You've got to be able to work with it and um, do it that it's perfect for her. Yeah, and I, I loved the fact that by having a couture uh, gown, I was involved in the process. Yes. So with designing it, it was like, no, maybe maybe that, no, maybe that up here, no, maybe, yeah, oh, that, yeah, yeah okay, yes. yeah. And I felt the confidence that yeah. as it was growing, I could see it coming together. And I yeah. think I had that experience, you know, with going to the, show, the, the, the showrooms and trying them on and just feeling like it was just, you know, trying to make it work. You yeah, know, exactly. and you'd see them on all the 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 um the mannequins, and they're all pulled yeah. in at the back. <laughs> the yeah, that thing that all the shops do with that massive pull. And yes. you're like, Why does the dress look like that? Oh, it's pulled yeah. in at the back. Yeah. So I yeah. think that was a, a major a major thing that I think a lot of people get sucked in with. Oh wow, yeah. that looks great. Why doesn't it look good on me? Because exactly. it doesn't look like that on the dummy. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, but each to their own, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and it is a personalised service, so it is a couture service. But a lot of people, I think, are going more that way um, yeah. because it is such an important day, um, and they don't want to just have something that they're not happy Generic. with. Yeah, if you're going to pay um, good money to have something that's an investment piece. You know, that's what I think yeah. is about, and it's that clarity on where your your passion is, and then putting that to where you can help solve something isn't yes. it in your marketplace looking yes. for that gap which I say where's that gap or where can you yeah. have authority in a niche yes. and um and then just own that niche because yeah. 
I mean, it doesn't mean you can't do everything else that you want to do, but yeah. just being known in particular for, for that, having that passion in that one area will allow you to be, oh, they say, I've got to go and see Joanne. Oh, yeah. no, she does that. Yeah. And, and I think that's exactly because I have a ready to wear collection at Aubrey Rose in the city. And that's for because, you know, the majority of brides want to walk in, try and address yeah. and um, be done, order it, and that's it. So, um, I do cover some of that market, but my passion is because each custom gown is so different. Yeah, and you that's know? your creativity, obviously. I mean, that has, you have to have some form of yeah. enjoyment out of what you're doing. And I can yeah. tell already, you know, that that creative process is where you're most fulfilled. Yes. And you're allowing someone to still have a part of that with your ready-to-wear collection. Yes. But yeah. those that want just that little bit more personalized have that option and you get to have fun in that creative oh, no. process. Exactly. Oh my gosh. You I just, <laughs> it's, yeah, I know, right? It's just bringing back all those memories of 25 years ago of like, oh my gosh, really? that was just. And then I remember, you know, um, I had quite a, a blush pinky ivory looking thing. And um, and I remember the girls, I had a, a bodice and the girls didn't one of them didn't tell me to pull my boobs up you know no. how sometimes yeah. it goes a bit flat so it was sitting up a bit high you know at the beginning yeah. of the day I looked amazing and then yeah. by the you know halfway there I was like so if anyone does have a bodice just tell your bridesmaids to lift you yeah and that was my only recommendation yeah get the girls up and uh yeah, just always keep an eye push them yeah. up and just make yeah. sure you get the most out of that bodice look because it is an amazing look so get the most out exactly now, I want people to be able to find everything you do so mm -hmm. where can people find you and what stuff do you have any events coming up that you can have people be a part of yeah so um you'll find I'm quite active on Instagram at JRW Bridal uh, my website is jrwbridal.com.au awesome. and we've got the Perth Wedding at Market Expo at the end of April and that's at the university grounds and we'll have a runway show going in the morning and afternoon and lots of other wedding vendors displaying. Oh, and I've seen you. I've seen those ones every year and they're amazing. So they definitely are. get along to that. Yeah. Um, and make sure to check Joanne out online because, uh, you know, I think when you're looking, it can get overwhelming. Yeah. And I think to have someone in your corner who's been there, done that, and has the passion to bring out what you want, I, I think if that's what you're looking for, then um, definitely you found your person. So <laughs> go and uh, check her out online. And I'll put all those links and also the link to the upmarket um, info in the show notes so people can find that um, should they be wanting right. to get more info. And yeah. uh, thank you for chatting my passion this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I just love to see it in real life and to see people, you know, experiencing what those, mm -hmm. um, you know, core values and why and custom avatar, how it looks yeah. in the real world instead of me just banging on about it all the time. It's nice yeah. to see people living those values and seeing the impact it yes. can have on your business. Yeah. Uh, so that's amazing. So thank you very much. Yes, and um, you, best of luck with the upmarket and yes. uh, everything else going forward. Thank you so much. It's been really great chatting. Awesome. See ya. See ya.